by fans, for fans, the hog style. And now, here's your host, Sean Conti. Welcome back to the Hogs Die, DC's unofficial leading source for all things Redskins and the NFL, brought to you cordially by BigHeadsMedia.com. The Redskins lose a close one today to New York, 41-35. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. Support for the Hogs Die comes from Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Ready or not, the holidays are here. Still struggling to come up with the perfect gift for that special someone in your life? The answer is Manscaped. The Manscaped Perfect Package 2.0 is the perfect gift this holiday season. It includes the Lawnmower 2.0 Trimmer, the Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Deodorant, and the Crop Reviver Toner Spray, which is infused with cooling aloe vera to keep you from sweating, sticking, and smelling. Trust me, she will love the manly scent of these products. It even comes with a pair of Manscaped boxer briefs to keep you feeling fresh all day long. Manscaped has redesigned the electric trimmer. Their new Lawn Mower 2.0 has proprietary advanced skin safe technology to prevent nicks and snags, has a rechargeable battery, and it's waterproof so you can use it in the shower. Stop using the same trimmer down below that you use on your face. So what are you waiting for? Head over to manscaped.com now and get 20% off your order and free shipping by using the code BIGHEADS. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Promo code BIGHEADS. And we're back. All right. Steve Thomas, Sean Conti here with you tonight. I got a lot I want to talk about with this game, Steve. I want to talk about Henches. I want to talk about Orchard, Sims, Daniel Jones, Dwayne Haskins. I want to talk about them all. But first, you had kind of a funny experience watching the game today, did you not? Yeah, I did. I was traveling all day today. Good Lord. I watched this game between two airports, two different airplanes, and for about an hour in at, at a gate and... What I came out of all this is that Southwest Airlines owes me four dollars, okay? <laughs> because, you know, I decided, you know, I, I was gonna watch, had to watch the game somehow, so I paid the eight bucks for the in for the in-flight Wi-Fi. Eight bucks, you know, okay, okay. Yeah, and that worked for, and it said all day, you know, all day, and then it worked for the first flight. Fine, it was a little sketchy, you know, but I got through the game basically, and so then um, I got all the way up to the two-minute warning, right? That was I was sitting in the Dallas airport waiting on my Ugh, flight, which was God. delayed about 30 minutes, even though I, you know, so I'm sitting there, and right at the two-minute warning, it was time to board. So I, then I sit down in my seat, trying to figure out real quick how to get the, the, the airplane <laughs> Wi-Fi back on that I paid right. for three hours ago, you know? Right. That doesn't work. Oh, God. <laughs> whatsoever. And so now, and um, tried it, and it's like, man, you know what? I'm not paying another eight bucks for this. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it, but then I realized, wait a minute. This game is now into overtime because I was following it on my phone, you know, on the ESPN. Right. So then that game was on overtime. So that was the last – that turned into the national game because you have to finish the early games before you start the late game. And so right. then I caught – then I caught it. <laughs> By the time I figured that out and got it working, the, you know, the, the airplane Wi-Fi was wonky, kept going in and out. So then finally, finally, when I got it working on the Southwest Airlines free Wi-Fi – it was the very last play of the game, Saquon, or the the the, the winning touchdown to the right. tight end. Right. So then I Brutal. went back and watched it. I've watched the whole game <laughs> since then. But it's like, thanks a lot, Southwest. You guys owe me four dollars. Well, I gotta say, eight bucks ain't bad to watch if you're watching an NFL game rocketing across the United States up in the sky. Eight bucks is pretty reasonable. I gotta say. I mean, well, it's amazing actually because the other thing was I'm watching it on a quasi. Oh, that was the other part of it. I'm watching it on the quasi free website. You know, quasi legal website. <laughs> oh yes. I'm very you familiar know? with those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because <laughs> I didn't really know what else to do. I mean, the Redskins send us this thing every day that says, you know, you can watch it on the Redskins website and, you know, on the app. And I couldn't figure any of that out. Yeah. So I'm, I go to the quasi-free website. Well, on my second leg in, you know, I log back in. It was fine. And then when the Wi-Fi went down and came back up, that site was gone. <laughs> oh, God, really? The so they caught it. The, the government the caught, caught it. In, they caught <laughs> the it. The they caught it in between the time 
Oh. I had boarded my second, my connecting flight <laughs> to the, about the 15 minutes it took for me to get connected back up. The site was gone. That's just your <laughs> so, luck, dude. Yeah, that's it was. Just your yeah, luck, so man. it's like that. That's why I was like, you know what? I'm not paying another eight dollars. I'm done. And then I, you know, so I, it all worked out in the end. But uh, somehow they caught that site in the middle of the morning, the end of the morning games. <laughs> So now I don't know what to do. I'm going to have to go back to the sports bar next week, which bums me out. Yeah, that's brutal, man. You get the purple heart of Redskins watching today. <laughs> that's that's brutal. All that for a loss. Yeah. Well, and speaking of loss, this is the question I always pose to you. You are no, you don't suffer no fools about this whole playing well in a loss concept. How do you feel today? I mean, it's another one of those situations where it's a loss. But they looked pretty darn good in some aspects of the game, right? So how, what's your general temperature check after a game like this? Oh, really? That well, bad? Look, I, 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 don't misunderstand me. I, yes, they played well, pretty well. The offense, the defense was damn near t- atrocious. Defense was right? uneven, uneven. But here's what I, what I, what that was all about. I'm so sick and tired of hearing these guys talk about rooting for losses because they want to move up one spot in the draft. That's going to happen yeah. five months from now. No, are you right. kidding me? And, and you know what? Chase Young ain't in the Hall of Fame, okay? I'm sick, That's right. I'm getting sick and tired of the guy already because every know-nothing out there is rooting for the Redskins to lose because they want to draft an edge rusher, which, by the way, isn't even our biggest need. We don't. We can have this BPA versus need thing, all that stuff. I don't want to – I'd rather kill myself than do right. that right now. Right, every year, but, every year. But the point is – Chase Young, he's good. He's he might be great. On the other hand, there's been plenty of edge rushers that have bombed out of the NFL. Oh yeah. You know, I, I don't know why anybody's so excited about the guy. And to me, the hugest, the biggest need is we need to protect Dwayne Haskins. Well, Trent Williams looks like he's gone. Absolutely, and he You're is. You're gonna gone. draft Chase Young, and then who is gonna be the stud left tackle? Are you gonna get one in round three? Maybe, but you want to take that chance? I don't. So I, I'm just sick to uh, – Chase Young's name is driving me crazy right well, now. Well, and this is a great thing to bring up right now because this is what I'm seeing in this game today. I'm seeing guys like Hentges, right, turn around mid-play, lay out for a catch, you know, and unca- no one else on this team is making that catch routinely. He comes on and makes that catch. We're seeing Nate Orchard run up and block a punt. We're seeing all of these guys contributing that we – you know, that, that – Basically, I don't know how else to say it other than they really have no place having games this good, and yet they do. So my question is, do we bite on the wrong talent? I mean, this is related to your Chase Young question. It's like, maybe we should just hold the horses. Look at the productivity we can get off of unheralded free agents, right? We de- we never make the right choice. So maybe this, you know, it's just a general question I'm asking. But this game kind of brings into perspective, like, look at the kind of game you can have when you get guys that really want to be here that are good, like, you know, they're not household names, they're unknown. Huge game today. Yeah, well, um, first of all, Nate Orchard was a guy who was literally crying in his interview with J.P. Finley two weeks ago. Yeah. He was in he was in tears when Finley asked him, what does it mean to you? And this is a guy who struggled, who wants to be here. You're exactly right. You know, they drafted Montez Sweat this year, and he's getting better. You know, the Redskins are misusing him because the coaching are just freaking idiots. Yeah. You know, they're dropping him back and well, They misuse everybody. Yeah. Yeah, they're idiots. But but the point is, Montez Sweat is probably our number one pass rusher right now. Or at least that's what they drafted him to be, and he's a rookie, and he's getting better. Um, I'm not saying I don't want Chase Young, but your point is valid. We've got this guy, Nate Orchard, who came out from nowhere. Nowhere. To be a good player, and he's and he's trying hard. Chris Odom showed, showed some stuff, you know, a couple not weeks ago. Not the first ago. time. Yep, exactly. Yeah, I mean, th- there's some good players off the edge. It's not that I don't want Chase Young. It's that I don't want Dwayne Haskins get repeatedly pulverized yeah. <laughs> over and over and over again. You yeah. Know, that's the point. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It's a valid point. Um, speaking of Haskins, let's talk a little bit about Haskins, too, um, before the ankle injury obviously brought him out. Um, what were you seeing in Haskins today? And I want to ask you about Jones, too, and do a little comparison. Okay. You want me to do his do his numbers? Yeah, yeah, do the stats. Okay. Yep. All right, let me run through the numbers real fast, and I'll get to that. So, uh, Case Keenum, 16 for 22, 158 yards, one touchdown, quarterback rating of 107.8. Dwayne Haskins, before he went down with his ankle injury, was 12 for 15, 133 yards, uh, 8.9 yards per attempt, two touchdowns, 143.2 rating. Outstanding. Holy moly. Yeah, Calvin Harmon. 
with the one with the one pass uh, 11 yards. Uh, rushing wise, Adrian Peterson had a bad day. 15 carries, 36 yards, 2.4 yards per attempt, long of 17, which means he's probably not going to get to a thousand for this year. He's probably ready to kill Jay Gruden for him <laughs> out of the first yeah. game of the season. Oh yeah, he always um, hates his coach every year. It doesn't matter who it is. Well, yeah, well, I mean, if he's play, you know, if he had the one more game, he probably would have gotten to a thousand. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Let's see. Chris Thompson, eight for thirty-four. Steven Sims, two for nine. In the air, uh, guess who? Of course, was the leading receiver, Terry McLaurin. Seven receptions, eighty-six yards, and on nine targets. Steven Sims had yeah, a big game. Six, right. re- six receptions, sixty-four yards, ten uh, on ten targets. Kelvin Harmon, five for fifty-eight. Hale Hintages, two for twenty-eight, including a touchdown. He was all smiles on the sideline. Good to see. He made two Peterson- clutch catches. Two yeah, Peterson had uh, two ca- two catches, 19 yards. Chris Thompson, four for 18. Cam Sims, first NFL reception in the regular season. Uh, one catch, 15 yards. Jeremy Sprinkles showed up, two for 14. On the Giants' side, um, Daniel Jones. Yeah, wow. 28 for 42, only 352 yards. Only. Only, only five touchdowns. Good Lord. Yeah, Saquon Barkley had an okay day, 22 carries, 189 yards, average just 8.6 yards per carry, so they held them below nine, you know, if you want to look at it on the bright side. Um, Golden Tate was the leading receiver uh, for both teams, six receptions, 96 yards. Barkley had four receptions, 90 yards, so for the record, he had 279 yards from scrimmage. That's just, I'll stop, I'll wait, I'll stop. Um, Sterling Shepard, 6 for 76. Cody Latimer, 5 for 44. Blah, blah, blah. More and more. Because um, it just drives me insane. Um, we only had the one sack on the day. It was Tim Settle. Uh, the Giants had three sacks on the day. So that's stats. <laughs> um, so Haskins, I mean, he, he really caught in a rhythm. This is what we saw with him at Ohio State. When he, especially later in the season when he got comfortable and he had time. Because he didn't, you know, he got it took a couple sacks, but... He wasn't pressured tremendously today, um, so he had time and he really got in a rhythm, and he's had time to practice now. So it was—I de- thought it was definitely when he went out in what the third quarter. I mean, it was his definitely his best game up until he went out. He—it's with with Haskins. He's a rhythm thrower, I think, and he talked about that in the post game press. As a matter of fact, said he went. He said when I got him, it's this is a bit of a paraphrase, but um, he said when I get in a rhythm, I'm hard to stop, and he's exactly right. Yeah. You know, so I loved what I see today. The question for you is, you know, he's got this ankle injury, and if, and what Callahan said about the ankle injury was, I think he has an ankle. To what degree, I'm not sure. So they don't really know. Um, the question is, does he play? Ne- should he play next week? That's the question. Uh, yeah, I mean, my my answer to that would be, if there's any indication it's lingering in any way, then no, go with the utmost caution. Um, if it really is 100% fine, he's confident, and you think he's being honest about that, and it, the doctors are all, you know, signing off, then I say sure, because his biggest problem is lack of experience. So yeah, get him out there, I think, as much as you can this season, without hurting him. So, you know, that's the question. Yeah, yeah I kind of, I'm kind of with you about it. Um, I've kind of seen enough. To know that we don't need to draft another quarterback next year, yeah, <laughs> you know, I, absolutely. So he's well made said. progress. You know, he's not fighting for his job. He's going to be the starter next year. So if he's good to go and he's totally fine, sure, play him. But if there's any question, just play Case Keenum for God's sakes. Yeah, you know that's the way I look at it. Agreed. Now to stay on uh, Haskins a little bit. So it's kind of sad. They both, J- Daniel Jones and Dwayne Haskins, both had great games today. And I, I feel like I wouldn't be asking this question if Daniel Jones didn't have such a great game today, but he did. So this is the question I'm posing to you. Do you think? I, I guess compare and contrast them a little bit. Do you feel like it's they're kind of even? In skill level right now, Haskins has more upside, but Jones is a little bit more dependable. Is that because that's how kind of I'm framing it in my mind right now? Um, overall, the whole season, Jones has kind of had a pedestrian year, it seems. So yeah, I mean, Jones was facing a horrendous Redskins secondary. Yeah, that's obviously. true. That's We're true. Playing it's... with a bunch of nobodies, you know, out there starting. But look, I mean, Jones has played a lot more football. Than Haskins, I, I think Haskins has more raw talent. I think his arm is much better than Jones, um, but Jones played a lot more football, and this is by far the best Jones has looked all year. Yeah, by far. No, this was like you a know. championship performance. <laughs> yeah, for him, and so I, I, I'm not upset that the Giants got Jones, and and I think ultimately um, Haskins has the more upside. It's just going to take Haskins longer. 
you yeah. know, to get there because he just hadn't played. Yeah, you know, that's it. So I'm I'm fine with it. You know, and and I blame the Redskins defense more than I do the Dallas or the Giants offense for what happened today. Right. Right. And we'll get and we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Before we do, Keenum a little bit. Also looking pretty good in his limited appearance today. 107 something rating, I think you said. Um, 107.8. Yeah. Got a touchdown going, so did pretty well for himself. So, um, you know, I don't know. That kind of makes it a little harder for me to assess where they're at right now. They kind of had. They were kind of doing similar performances here, but between Haskins and Keenum. Though that said, there's no question that. Haskins is the guy to be playing. There's no question that Keenum should be back in there. No question at all. But similar performances from the two today. Well, yeah. I mean, we knew what we had in Keenum. Keenum yeah, was going to so. come in and do pretty well all season. The right. point wasn't that Keenum got benched. Right. You know, I, I, I like Case Keenum fine. He's not going to the future of the team or anything. But he was always a decent quarterback. He never sucked. He was never John Beck. You know, oh for God, God's yeah. sakes. I remember that <laughs> guy. Pat Wyatt or somebody. I mean, Keenum's a decent quarterback, and he can come in and be a decent starter. He, you know, he's not going to win a Super Bowl or anything. So he, Keenum did about what I expected. And for the record, Dwayne Haskins had a higher completion percentage. Yeah, you know, that's, yeah, right. This time. But, I mean, and look, I mean, Keenum had the great drive, 99-yard drive, you know, to score a touchdown late in the fourth quarter. That was the best drive the Redskins had all year. Yeah, it was. You know, so he he played well. He ought to be proud of himself. And, and um, he's going to play for somebody next year. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know if the Redskins want him. I, I think he'd be great backup, personally. If I don't know if he want to do that. But I think the Redskins could use him as a backup. Absolutely. He'll probably get year. a better offer for something Colt else. Colt McCoy's going to be gone. I mean, he's Jay Gruden's <laughs> favorite pet. And, See you. you know, they're gonna, yeah, they're going to let the pet to walk out the door, yeah. you know. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that one. No, no um, absolutely not. Okay, so let's go through a little bit more of these guys on offense because we had some great games. I mean, you bring up McLaurin, and my gosh, is there any doubt at this point about McLaurin? Week after week, man. Week after He's week. He's a stud, dude. Yep. I mean, what can you say? I mean, just wait till this guy gets more experience. You know what's great about him, though? It's it's if you really watch him, how great a route runner he is. He has very, very subtle moves that creates a lot of space. And that's like stuff you see like Larry Fitzgerald do. Like, and, and I'm not saying relax, people. I'm not saying he's Larry Fitzgerald, but uh, and he does things that very, very experienced receivers can do. You know, like for here's a good example. Like I, I watch a lot of. I was infatuated with Donald, Donald Parham. Remember him for period of time because mm-hmm. he was so long and lean and everything so i watched all this film i did a study on him and like donald palm will run like a post pattern and he'll just run out there and he'll make his cut and that'll be that and he'll be covered and maybe not because he was playing crappy competition in college well terry mclaurin doesn't just run a post pattern he has subtle moves with his head he'll stutter step he uses his hands you know to create space and that, that's he's just way more advanced than other receivers and the the tv crews usually do a good job of pointing out that stuff so i it's great the, i think the guy i want to talk about is steven sims yeah another big day absolutely what you yeah. got well i mean you know you could argue that he may have dropped the one long pass there you know in the first half of the game but i mean the, the question with him isn't his explosiveness the question has always been his hands yeah right you know and when he's on you know, like he was today, I mean, he can really be uh, a huge asset. I, I tell you what, I've seen enough of Trey freaking Quinn. <laughs> yeah, you he are, doesn't need to be a slot Trey receiver. Quinn. You're harder yeah. than on Trey Quinn than I am. He's come through a couple times. I know it hasn't been enough this season, but there's this team such a mess. I don't really indict him on that. I think he has some some tools in the toolbox. In this I, I don't blame him. You know, I, I just, like, Steven Sims needs to be the starting slot receiver next no, year. No, he, he you know? killed it. And and remind me again, it was Sims. This is the play you're referencing. He's, like, he's got, he actually has two hands on it. He's laying out for it, and it comes out. Yeah. That's the play. Yeah, so that was close. But I, In my mind, if the receiver has two hands on the ball, he needs to catch it. An NFL That's receiver, it. Yeah. yes, he should have had that. But it wasn't the worst drop in the world. You know, it was a tough, very tough play. But I think he probably should have had it. I don't. I wouldn't count that. My notes are all wacky today because, you know, I was on airplanes and whatnot, so I didn't count drops. But I probably wouldn't have counted that as a drop, even though he probably should have had it. Yeah. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. No, I agree. Um, but, yeah, no, two touchdowns for him, 64-some yards. I mean, is it weird that our receiving core is coming alive so much towards the end of this season? I mean, it's nice to see. No. But they're making I don't some think plays. It's weird. I mean, they play. They're playing. They're getting more experience. You know, they're going to get better. I, I, everybody thought Kelvin Harmon had talent. You know, we all thought he was under. He the Redskins got a, you know got him on a steal basically for a song for what was he fifth round sixth round, 
Yeah, I mean, so I, I think everybody thought Kelvin Harmon would be good. Um, the guy I'm surprised about is Hale Hentages. You know, like who who in the world is Hale Hentages? You know, he's from Alabama. Um, if you're an Alabama dude, I guess you know who he is. But, I mean, he's he's playing his heart out. He's playing for a shot at the 2020 roster. He's not Tony Gonzalez or anything, but still, you know, he's a good player. Yeah. Oh, frankly, Haskins sucked in the early part of the season, though. So, the other here's what I want to go next, though, with this is the offensive line. I mean, my God, terrible. You know, I, yeah, well, my goodness. I mean, the run blocking just is atrocious. How many times did you see Adrian Peterson, like, physically assaulted, you know, in the backfield? And he'd have to do his Adrian Peterson stuff to even get back to the line of scrimmage. You know, just awful. I mean, I I thought Chase Rie had a bad game today. Got beat repeatedly. Wes Martin didn't look very good for the most part. And you saw Morgan Moses get beat before Moses went out. I, I thought none of them really had. A, Donald Penn looked like he was hurt to me. You, you know. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I we said in the game preview that they are much better against the rush. They. Opposing teams are averaging 3.9 yards per attempt going into this game uh, against them. So I didn't expect Adrian to have a – no, but I, to me it was about block. It was just poor blocking, mistakes, you know. I, so I, the offensive line is in crisis to me. No. But by all means, guys, let's draft Chase Young. <laughs> and I put that I put that out there after the game just to troll people because you know I like doing that on Twitter because it makes me happy. <laughs> and I've got I got I don't know forty or fifty sixty responses at least t- calling me an idiot and you know all of that which that just makes me happy people right. You know. People need to understand about Steve. That's just going to make him double down. You're, you're yeah, having the will. opposite It'll effect. Be, it will. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, so I consider that a successful of tweeting event. Nice. Okay. No, no press <laughs> is bad press. Um, okay. Anything else on offense before we talk a little bit more about defense? I mean, we kind of feel like we kind of hit most of it. Tough day running. Better good day receiving. Offensive line sucks. What else can you say? Yeah. I, I mean, it was – Dwayne Haskins continues to get better. It was – shaping up the bit to be the best game of his career until he got hurt you know which is just the most redskins thing ever of course oh yeah know. that's perfect of course he goes down and it looked like it could have been a lot worse than an ankle it looked to me like it was like a knee when i first saw it yeah you know staring at my tablet on an airplane it looked like a knee so i was glad it was just an ankle give it two days uh, it'll become a knee i guarantee it'll become a knee <laughs> problem hope, don't say that yeah let's right hope not <laughs> uh okay let's talk a little bit about defense you did some defensive stats right yeah you did a little bit of defensive stats yeah i really went over the defensive stats um you know like you kind of said at the beginning anytime you have a, a team scoring 41 points you can't exactly call it a good defensive game and yet there were some okay moments. It's just like this team is so sloppy and uneven. It's so lopsided that you you know it's like one step forward, two steps back with the defense right now. Is you what saw some about. good. You saw some good defensive moments. Yeah, so well, I guess this is more special teams. But you know the things that stick. <laughs> yeah, you know the things that stick out really are like blocking punts and you know the kind of big moments like that. That's more special yeah. teams. Well, yeah, that's special. That's great. Yeah, that is special, special teams. teams. You yeah. know, we got the block punt. Um, but you know the the key. To, my written game preview that I did. The number one key to the game, stop a, is, is focus on Saquon Barkley, make Daniel Jones beat you. Yeah, I mean, what did we do? They didn't stop Saquon Barkley. Yards. They didn't stop Saquon <laughs> Barkley at all, no. and Daniel Jones did beat us. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it, look. This speaks to your entire thing. You've been beating this drum all year. This is an overrated defensive line. And, I mean, this this shows it right here. 189 yards is disgusting. Uh, yeah, and, and the, I mean, as far as Saquon goes, I mean – 
um, Chris Spielman did a good job of pointing out a couple times how you know the the linebackers and the defensive uh, the defensive front three were in the wrong gaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? right. And that's a guy like Spielman can see that immediately where we would struggle to see that. But he pointed that out, and that happened multiple times. Uh, you know, um, communication Matt problems I, not, between Collins yeah. and other people. It's just sloppy. Yep. Matt Ioannidis got beat. You know, in the middle. You know, I, I you know there were a couple plays where you saw Ioannidis falling and Saquon Barkley was running past him. You know that happened a couple times. I just think, and, and this is, I realize I just made fun of everybody for wanting to draft Chase Young. I realize that this is hypocritical, but I mean, I think it's a combination of just atrocious coaching and these players aren't as good as we thought they were. Both because you know, also, you know, we're idiots, right? But even you and I know that if you have a rookie quarterback, what's the best thing to do? Yeah, keep them off balance, frazzle blitz them, them, blitz, blitz them the hell out of them. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's obvious. Especially it's, since they don't have Jerry Rice out there as a receiver, for God's sakes. Well, and that's the thing. Blitz the man. And that's the thing of it, Steve, is this is like, I don't believe the quality of players along the defensive line and the linebackers are as bad as they're playing. This is obvious. Like you just said, we can't even game plan the most simple concepts of keeping a rookie quarterback off balance. Like, we struggle with that. So I think we actually have a good defensive team. They're all over the place. There's no cohesion at all in the play, and that's the real problem. I think this is a good team. I really do believe that. I don't think they're as good as we hope. That's all I'm well, saying. Well, that's fair, but I, they're never as good as we hope. We're Redskins fans. No, they're not. But, I mean, something – I just – Maybe I'm wrong, but I keep seeing them lose one-on-one battles over and over and over again. You know, it's like Greg Minuski didn't cause gigantic gaps in the defensive front seven. You know, Greg Minuski didn't miss tackles. So many tackles, I lost count of it. You know, all of that yeah. was on the players. Yeah. Yes, it's his fault. You know, if we see one more, like, soft zone, we all want to collectively scream. You know, I mean, I get it. I really do. If we see one more play where he's not blitzing, he's rushing for, not blitzing anybody, like that Bang Bang Redskins cartoon is like just, it's so accurate. Yeah. You know, the one where the car won't start and he's, Minuski's going, duh, you know, rushing for. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, so, yeah, soft zone rushing for, boss. I mean, that's what he does, and it's very frustrating to see. But all the same, I do put some of the blame on the players. Yeah, I mean, this is like, you know, if it's all just players, you wouldn't need a coach. So obviously, coaches are employed because there's some kind of overall, what's the word, uh, beauty to it, method to it, that's not coming across to these guys. Like, that's the problem. That's why we can't pass a guy off into the secondary and coverage. That's why people are yelling at each other and yelling at, you're supposed to be over there and I'm over here. It's just like the, co- it's the, it's the coaching, I think, is missing. But you're right. The quality of these Alabama players is a bit overrated. I mean, that's obvious so. to this point. Yeah, yeah, I think so. In terms of the secondary, I mean, they were awful, obviously. Yeah. But we had something called Kayvon Webster yeah, on who, the field. Who the hell are these people? Where are these people coming from? The, the, Cody, Cody, since they were street free agents that we signed, and boom, they had to start because, you know, Quentin Dunbar, Fabian Rowe, both out, Jimmy Moreland on IR. They're just not going to play Josh. I think they should have played Josh Norman today, but Probably. I can understand why they didn't yeah, because no. they don't want him to get a hurt. I mean, understand that. But, I mean, I think we saw why, to a certain extent, guys like Kayvon Webster and Cody Sinsenbaugh were available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. They did. It's hard to blame them too much when they showed up on, like, Wednesday. I mean, I understand that. But they didn't play well. They didn't tackle well. You know, it, but the linebackers didn't do well. You know, like Bostic was, I thought Bostic was responsible for the, the touchdown, what, the second drive of the game where the the tight end was ran f- completely free. You know, it was Barkley ran completely free into the end zone uncovered. Mm-hmm. Well, that looked like to me it was on Bostic. Yeah. Bostic didn't follow him, you know, because Landon Collins got drawn but to the other half of the field. Bostic just went, oh, yeah, there he goes. Okay, let me stand here. You know, that so – None of them played well. It wasn't just Cody Sensenbaugh and Kayvon Webster's fault. Uh, the, it, I, how many times do we have to see communications problems in the secondary? Yeah, over I mean, and over and over again, every game. Every week. Uh, it's some point you got to blame what who, the uh, Rhodes, the secondary coach. When is it going to be his fault? You know. Yeah, good question. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question, Steve. But it's. I mean, that gets to the heart of it. Um, no accountability. 
Um, yeah, I mean, there's not really anything to point your finger at. One fumble loss today by New York, Daniel Jones. He has a huge problem with that, so kind of hard to credit that too much to the defense, I would say. Um, well, it's a good play by Collins. Yeah. Really watch it. He Collins got punched in there. It out. He punched it out. But that Absolutely. was the other key to the game, though, remember? I mean, we knew that Collins, or um, uh, what's his name, Jones had a ton of turnovers, and the key to the game was... Make the man turn the ball over. That's Did they true. do it? No, of course not. Yeah, no, that's true. That's a good point. Um, he's just so chronically prone to fumbling that, like, you know, I don't want to tip my hat too much. Um, but, no, that's that's fair to say. Um, what else on defense? Anything else you want to say? I mean, pretty pretty crappy game. Yeah, um, uh, I thought Cole Holcomb looked bad at times. Um, sure. Tim Settle's really come on and done some good things, you know, here. I think he, he's a – future long-term player you know for the team settles look good i I think montez sweat has slowly gotten better i still will just never understand why in the name of all that's good and holy does he drop back into coverage (laughs) insanity to me yeah what i just don't understand it i mean this team needs to transition to the four three worse than anything for years that's been needed i don't get why it survived different coaches i mean that's the weirdest thing it's just stubbornness and stupidity. Uh, yeah, but that's just like, do you want to lose? Like, what's going on? But <laughs> Don't these players work better and as a 4-3? I mean, we don't have a true traditional nose tackle. We have we have a converted two converted defensive ends in Ryan Kerrigan and Montez Sweat, where Kerrigan's on IR, I realize that, but they're both true 4-3 defensive ends, and they've never been all that great in coverage. Yep. You know, we don't not like we have linebackers which are like screaming 4-3. None of the linebackers really, you know, all that. You know, the inside linebackers are all that great. I just I don't understand. I don't understand. Let alone for the Redskins. I think, and this is a topic for the off season. Thank God that is approaching quickly because I'm done with this team this year. But I think <laughs> that you know, in the league today, I don't know. We we should debate the merits of the three four at all uh, in the modern league because I think it's just whatever conversation. Well, if you have the players, the it, it, uh, it, if you it have the players, it, I get it. But we have yeah. never had like. We clearly have a problem finding those players, or those players aren't available to create a good, dynamic enough 3-4 defense. It's not working. If you can have a true two-gapping nose tackle and you have versatile outside linebackers that can work, but what we don't have is a true two gapping nose tackle and versatile outside linebackers. Yeah, and, <laughs> you know, right? I just, I just, we've never been able to get the players, and and for this team, I think the four three would work better. Yeah, we'll see. Who knows what we're going to do next year? I mean, it'd be a new coaching staff probably. So, well, exactly, and that's going to give us plenty, Maybe. plenty of fodder to talk about these things in the off season. Because you're right, this is we could potentially be going into new uncharted territory. Unless the Redskins can't find a coach and they have to bring Bill Callahan back. Dear, nobody else wants to be here. Dude, I don't know. I have no comment in response to that. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, by another 20 comments, by the way, on Twitter from my um, from my uh, um, my Trace Young tweet, oh, God. by the way. I, that makes me so happy. And they're all you positive? I just don't know. I, 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 I don't, don't know. know. <laughs> I can't read them while we're doing the show. But yeah. I'm sure that they're all, you're an idiot and, you know. Ugh. Oh. It just makes me smile. Yeah, Merry Christmas to Steve. That's all he wanted. <laughs> um, okay, let's do some game balls. Unless you all have right. other thoughts about the game, feel free to please give give them to me. Well, I mean, look, giving up 41 points to the pathetic New York Giants Boo. is an embarrassment, yeah, okay? It's, it's a darn shame to waste a 30, the offense's biggest output of the year. It's a darn shame that the defense had their worst game of the year. Yep. You know, and it's also a very Redskins thing to do because this team just isn't very good, and they're not going to ever put a whole game together, basically. That's what we saw today. Um, The defense needs major help, you know, in all areas. Not all areas, most areas. All the critical ones. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Yep. Uh, I can't really add anything on to that. I'll just piggyback. I mean, this team's problems are as clear as they've ever been. It's not like it's a mystery what's going on. Um I love the outstanding lights out performances we were seeing from guys like Hask. I mean, lights out in his, you know, in terms of him. Love what we're seeing from that, from McLaurin, from Sims. I mean, I love it, but it's just not Look, enough to flash in the pan. We got to see it consistently. Yeah, I mean, all this team needs is a couple things, right? All we need is a left guard or a left tackle, a right tackle, two guards. Uh, a you know, a younger running back, a couple tight ends, <laughs> some outside line, one more outside linebacker, some inside linebackers, <laughs> two two yeah. corners, and a safety. And this is going to be a darn good team. And then we're and a ball. coach and a new coaching staff. and a new coaching staff. If entirely. you throw all, if you just put 
all those pieces together, it, they could be good. Yeah, you forgot new owner, but we'll let that one. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, there you go, and a new team president. We can at least root for that. We're not going to get it, but you know. Yeah, no, oh, that's true. I think everything you said is right on. Let's do some game balls. Um, <laughs> all right. Okay, I'll take it. Look, I'm giving my game ball offensively. I love that we have a couple options for this one today. I mean, it's tempting to give it to Sims for the two touchdowns. It's tempting oh, to give it to good. McLaurin because thank you for finally being a draft pick that panned out. It's tempting to give it to Haskins because probably best game of the year. Um, I'm going to give it to Sims for the two touchdowns because you know what? I haven't given him one yet this year, I don't think. Maybe I have. Um, defensively, yeah, I think maybe Collins for the forced uh, fumble. Um or you know, or can I say Orchard? That's a defensive play, even though it was a special teams play. Like we can we can call the blocked yeah. punt defensive. It right? was a defensive okay. play, sure. It we'll was call a defensive that. play. Then I'm going okay. with Orchard. Yeah, you know, it's it, Terry McLaurin's the guy when you play Pee Wee football and they give stickers out, and eventually they stop giving the best player stickers because he has too many yep. compared to the other seven year olds. Right. I mean, this is Terry McLaurin in the game ball thing. I just yeah. feel bad about giving it to him so many times. So I actually exactly. agree with you with Steven Sims. He overcame his bad – he had a bad game last week. And he overcame that, had two big touchdowns, looked like a pro. He, You know, the first touchdown was great because, you know, if you notice, like Haskins was, roll, was scrambling to his left and Sims tracked the quarterback and made it super easy for him, you know, to, to make that throw. So, yeah, great Hell game yeah. by Steven Sims. I agree. And on defense, I mean, should I pull one of my normals? On defense, I have a really hard time giving any of these bombs. I mean, yeah, you can't do it today after 41 points. You can't break from the mold and actually give a defensive game ball today. Yeah, of so all days. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give Saquon Barkley the defensive game ball. Fair enough. <laughs> Because the man ran for 189 yards and had 279 yards total offense, and so what? I, here's what I think. I think the defensive captains. So I guess that'd be John Allen. I guess. I guess they need to walk the game ball down to the Giants' locker room and present the game ball to him on bended knee. Yeah, I would There's support my defensive that. game ball. <laughs> I, I co-sign that. Is John Allen the defensive captain? This is pathetic. God, I don't know that, but I don't. Well, Landon is Collins, he? I think, actually okay, is the that, defensive captain. That's yeah, so. Okay, that, that sounds right. We'll okay. make Landon and John Allen both go down there, present the game ball to, to uh, Saquon. I'm 100% in support of that. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Well, then we will leave it there for this New York game. God, what a disappointing one. Steve, do we have anything to say about the schedule for next episode? Yeah, no, no we okay. do. First of all, Merry Christmas. Yes, and happy Merry Hanukkah Christmas. And happy anything else you guys are celebrating. I guess Kwanzaa is probably this week, isn't yes. it, sometime? Well said. So happy, all that stuff. Um, so in terms of this week, because even we are not masochistic enough to record a show on Christmas Day, no, it is you. going to be one day late. So the... Uh, who the hell are we playing next week? Dallas. Yeah. The division game. The Dallas <laughs> game preview will be on Friday morning, not Thursday. So um, there's that. And then we need to figure out what we're doing after the season ends next week in terms yeah. of shows. So we'll announce that uh, on the Dallas game preview probably because we don't know yet. We haven't talked about it. Yeah, it kind of depends. Typically, we take it. There's There might be a small break after like the first week the season ends, but we'll figure right. it out and we'll keep you updated, obviously, before we yeah. before we get there. Okay, we sweet. can't announce what we don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, awesome. Then we will leave it there. That's the Giants recap. We will be back with you guys next week. Talk a little uh, Dallas stuff, and we will see you then right here on the Hawkstye. Take care.